Welcome to NTN Nightly. I'm Huma Dimak. This edition stop stories. St. Lucia's management of COVID-19 registered a major success as government increases the response budget. St. Lucia's private sector partners with government in relief efforts for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And the Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project has again served the island well. St. Lucia's management of COVID-19 registered a major success this week for the first time. Since the third wave of the virus, the island registered zero new cases and the lowest number of active cases. On Tuesday, April 20, 2021, the Ministry of Health and Wellness reported no new cases of COVID-19 from a batch of 119 samples taken during the period April 17, 2021 to April 19, 2021. These samples were processed on April 19, 2021. The Ministry of Health also received confirmation of the recovery of five individuals diagnosed with COVID-19, bringing the total number of active cases in country to date to 80. Meantime, Health Minister Senator Honorable Mary Isaac says government continues to provide necessary resources to the national fight against the pandemic. Honorable Isaac was at the time addressing the Senate sitting on the 2021-2022 appropriation bill. Since March 2021, $10 million was added to the budget for the COVID-19 response. This will be used, Madam President, to augment the budget to cover outstanding payments for quarantine, for respiratory hospital civil works, the rehabilitation of Castries Wellness Center, among other activities. Madam President, the government of St. Lucia has also sourced 13 million euros to assist with the COVID response, which will include the setting up of two isolation units, one in the north and one in the south of the island, as well as improving the physical capacity of the Ezra Long Laboratory by a build-out for blood bank and serology department. This source of funding will also include the rehabilitation of the extra warehouse space for central procurement, thereby increasing the capacity for storage of personal protective equipment and pharmaceuticals. The complete proposed project activities, Madam President, totals $46.1 million. Several capital projects are also being undertaken in a bid to strengthen the healthcare system. Emergency response for COVID-19, the budget is $31.1 million. And that funding is coming from World Bank and the Development Policy Credit. Health System Strengthening Project, Madam President, that's a budget of $8.8 .8 million. And that, again, is funded by World Bank IDA. The OECS Regional Health Project, with a budget of $2.67 million, funded by World Bank. The new National Hospital Commission in the budget, 12,985,000. Construction of Denry Polyclinic with a budget of 18 million, funded by World Bank. Construction of Miku Wellness Center with a budget of 1.2 million. That's US, Madam President. 3.2 million EC, funded by World Bank. Rehabilitation of Sufre Hospital, 5.6 million dollars again funded by World Bank. We have the World Bank Health System Strengthening Project at 20 million US dollars over a four year period. Electrical works were carried out at the Zufre Hospital costing $147,000. St. Lucia's relief efforts for St. Vincent's and the Grenadines is continuing with the private sector partnering with government. King Ocean Service, a subsidiary of MNC Shipping, is the latest company to provide assistance. More in this report. A local shipping company is contributing to disaster relief efforts in St. Vincent and the Grenadines as the neighboring island continues to cope with the effects of explosions from the La Sofria volcano. King Ocean Shipping, a subsidiary of MNC Shipping, partnered with the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, to deliver emergency supplies freight-free to St. Vincent. Keitha Annett is a sales executive at MNC Shipping. We originally was due to arrive last week, but as a, re well, last week Wednesday, but as a result of what had transpired, on short notice, we altered our rotation to come in on the Tuesday and we were able to load out nine 40 feet containers to St. Vincent 
um, providing relief items. Out of the nine, um, we were able to load two, which were donated by the, sorry, by MNC Shipping head office, which is, well, parent company, I should say, which is Minville and Chastney Limited. The company says they have a good rapport with the National Emergency Management Organization and has assisted the organization with relief efforts in Dominica post-Hurricane Maria in 2017. Nemo knows that they can call on us at MNC and King Ocean at any time in order to assist them in their time of needs. We have a very good relationship with the management of Nemo, including uh, Ms. Meda and the other um, members at Nemo. Anytime they need help, they, they are free to call on us and we will see how best we can assist. King Ocean Shipping Services expects to continue with relief efforts to St. Vincent and the Grenadines with the shipment of at least five 40-foot containers this week. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. And the United Nations has launched a global appeal fund for the volcano-stricken sister isle. Prime Minister Honorable Ralph Gonzalves taught the Red Zone with a UN team. Here's Khalil Kato of SVG TV. Prime Minister Gonzalves said that the communities have long faced multiple threats from nature, including sea erosion, hurricanes, unseasonal and excessive rainfall, and most recently, the eruption of the volcano in a time when the entire nation is battling the COVID-19 pandemic. Dr. Gonzalez said there is quite a bit of work that will, need to be, that will need to be done in the area as homes which were not totally destroyed will need extensive repairs. The Prime Minister said he wanted the United Nations officials to see firsthand the level of devastation unfolding on the island as a result of the eruption of the Lasso Freire volcano. The combination of forces of nature pile up from the last event with rainfall, excessive rainfall, and landslides and mudslides and the rest. The impact of the rumbling and rolling of stones too and the, 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 the ash fall. And on top of that, what we are seeing with sea erosion. So it's a, uh, it's, it's the, the multiple problems. In this case, three of them related to nature. That's why several persons in the delegation from the UN using the word to describe here apocalyptic. UN Resident Coordinator for Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean, Didier Trebouc, described what he saw as apocalyptic noting that his team will be working alongside the government of SVG to provide assistance to those in need. United Nations to, to help the Vincentians, the contacted. people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, yeah, exactly. to, with not only humanitarian assistance, and, and, uh, to, supply, to help the government supply the, the most basic needs like water, like food, like cash voucher, like health, and help with the cleanup of the ashes and all related environmental health issues, but also to recover from this crisis, to rehabilitate their agriculture, to uh, look after housing and shelter, immediate needs, but also more longer term needs, so that people can return safely as soon as possible and within the, 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 the current risk that exists. Trebuk further stated that all facets of the United Nations have been mobilized and a donation of two million US dollars in aid will be given to SVG. Meanwhile, residents who refused to leave one of the villages in the red zone have been recounting their experience. More in this report. The action of this dog paints a bleak picture of the situation in Oya, which is one of the communities in the red zone on the windward side of the island, devastated by the eruption of La Sofrea volcano. The owner of the dog returned to the community for the first time on Sunday since the eruption started, and when it was time to leave, the dog jumped into the water and swam towards the boat. Yeah, taking it down, I'm oh, taking it down. The dog just can't take the pressure up here. Just can't take the pressure. Can't look at the dog jump past it. There is total destructive transformation of Oya, with a number of buildings destroyed, including churches and the entire village covered with several inches of volcanic ash. New beaches were also formed at a new waterfall. 
developed from the destruction of the main bridge connecting Fancy to Oya. The riverbed of the Oya Big River has been totally transformed with these huge boulders coming from the mountain slope. Dale Medica, who stayed behind, heard when it all happened. It was like over about a thousand yards away. I heard the rumbling, but I didn't make it here because rain was coming. Yeah, this is a new river fall in Oya. This was born on um, the 13th of April, 2001. Some areas in the community reeked of the scent of dead animals. This elderly resident, Grafton Caesar, is one of the men who did not evacuate. He said although they were able to save some animals, they could not save all. When the river comes down, sheep and goat and pigs wash into, if it, when you watch goat and sheep in, um, in, inside the, the water, down in the seawater right there. Just like a wharf, they don't the real sheep and goat and dogs because they have no shelter place to shelter. So um, in the river, they ha like have to cave with the, with the animal to go and shelter. But they don't know because they don't have um, you, you know, the opportunity like we human beings. So river take them and carry them away. Another resident known as Jumbi said at this time, Oya is inhabitable as there is a constant sandstorm. He said it will take a long time before Oya returns to anything close to normal. When you look at it, it's like, like it's a desert being in and we say you have to be good for living in a desert. The situation here we're going on now is a farming thing going on you know. and the people them cannot come back in this village here for now because up at the water um, situation real bad real difficult now for put back pipe have to run real years before well make say no may say plenty years but it could take a time due to the weight of volcanic ash which has formed like cement some roofs are caving in the remaining Oweo residents and those who have been watching videos and pictures of their houses from a distance are praying for rain to keep the dust down and wash away the dirt off their houses and crops which for many are the livelihood for SVG TV News, Larissa Pogsdike. The St. Lucia diaspora has responded favorably to a request of the Ministry of Health for resources that enhances service delivery to the local population. The first in a series of donations was made this week. On behalf of the Unity St. Lucia UK Association, the Diaspora Affairs Unit presented 10 commode chairs to the Ministry of Health's procurement officer, Mrs. Alison Jean. Her Excellency Jocelyn Fetcher is Ambassador of Diaspora Affairs. Association is a, um, St. Lucia, it's, it's, they call themselves actually Unity UK Association. They have, um, they're made up of a number of um, associations in the UK, so they're the umbrella of those associations. And together, they have, they have been sending a lot of things down to St. Lucia, but on the call from the Ministry of Health for Assistance, they have donated 10 commodes to the Ministry of Health on behalf of that association. So we are say, um, saying to the Mrs. Um, Jean, who is the procurement officer of the Ministry of Health, am I correct, Mrs. Jean? Sure. So we are saying to, um, on behalf of Unity, St. Lucia UK Association, I present you with, this is a sample of what is in those boxes, 10 of them to the Ministry of Health. We'd like to thank the Unity Association through our diaspora office in facilitating the 10 commodes and we will assure you that these commodes will get to the places which need it at our health institutions and perhaps to patients who may be dying in a bit. So again on behalf of the Ministry of Health, we are grateful for this donation. Thank you. Thank you. In more diaspora developments, the St. Lucian diaspora was recently engaged in a crime and security in St. Lucia discourse spearheaded by the St. Lucia Diaspora Affairs Unit in collaboration with the Ministry of Home Affairs, Justice and National Security and the Institute of Caribbean Studies. Jesse Leos has the details of the virtual event. 
Minister for Home Affairs, Justice and National Security, Senator the Honorable Herman Kil Francis, has committed to publish reports coming out of weekly citizen security meetings that are held with Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney. This was one of the resolutions coming out of a St. Lucia Diaspora Crime and Security Discourse held on March 21st. The virtual event was held for St. Lucians in the diaspora, contemplating repatriation to live and work or invest. Honorable Francis reinforced the commitment of the government to constantly refine crime management systems and overall safety and security on the island. He agrees that the diaspora must be updated on the progress that the administration makes in this respect. We must give some more information. Um, it is not anything that we, can, we have to hide, but to publish the, the, the weekly um, reports that we get from this um, the citizen security meetings that we have with the Prime Minister. So I intend to do that, and um, I'm happy for this question. I think it is it is good because perception is, is how we say it, 90% of the truth. And But I know for a fact that St. Lucia is very, very, very safe for, um, for our visitors and for St. Lucians who are going to want to come back home. We have had a number of persons who have returned or, or come to St. Lucia to um, engage in business, and they have not had any issues. The discourse featured other government officials, including the Commissioner of Police and the Director of Borderly Corrections, as well as executives of the Institute of Caribbean Studies. Among inquiries made by participating St. Lucians in the diaspora were requests for updates on forensic ballistics capabilities on Ireland, prosecution rate of financial crimes, and the impact of criminal deportees from places like the U.S. on local crime. Panelist Dr. Claire Nelson, who is the founder and president of the Institute of Caribbean Studies, in turn challenged the diaspora to use some of their first world skill sets to assist in improving safety and security in St. Lucia. Some of you are data scientists, some of you are into AI. I want us all to put on our thinking caps as we go into the next, this is 17 minutes to go. What next? What role should the diaspora who are either data scientists, data analysts, AI, blockchain, and all these new technologies be thinking about offering. We have here, I think, a very welcome and open um, team in St. Lucia. I think the diaspora, the St. Lucian diaspora, may well be able to set a standard for diaspora engagement in the safe communities process, in the youth empowerment processes, as well as in helping us think through how can we use technology and law more effectively, use the CCJ, use the Eastern Caribbean system to create that safety net for reporting crime so that people feel safe and witness and protection costs can be brought down to an affordable level for our countries. The St. Lucia Diaspora Crime and Security Discourse was a collaboration of the Local Diaspora Affairs Unit, Ministry for Home Affairs, Justice and National Security, and the Institute of Caribbean Studies. For the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leonce reporting. The Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project has again served the island well. This after the village of Denry withstood the heavy rains associated with a trough on 12th April 2021. More in this report. With more than 114 millimeters of rain within a six-hour period, residents of Denry have come to expect flooded drains, impossible streets, overflowing bridges, and a significant impact on commercial activity. The unusual downpour of April 12th tested the engineering designs of the Denry Flood Mitigation Works, which has been a work in progress in the face of this perennial challenge. There's a central drain that goes through Denry from the Green Mountain area that brings in a tremendous amount of water on its way to the sea. There's the Mole River as well that carries water um, from the internal part of the, the country, from the center of the island. And um, all that goes through Denry and goes into the sea. So, um, and, and coupled with the fact that Denry is, part of Denry is below sea level. The Denry South Flood Mitigation contract was awarded through a competitive bidding process to Triple L Construction Company and is being undertaken in multiple phases. The project um, entails um, the construction of the central drain, improvement to the um, Chualo drain, that's the drain further north, a large one, um, the construction of uh, two retention ponds, and a pumping station and an outlet into the river. We've constructed the, the central drain, most of it, the outlet into the river, and um, 
um, the ponds are coming up next, and then after that we'll follow the, the, the pumps. Um, we are at what stage? We are at the central drain stage, um, practically 90%. The April deluge was a dress rehearsal for this flood mitigation engineering feat. I'm impressed with what we've done and the performance. I did not expect at, at this stage for it to be performing so well. What we can expect to see now is um, further improvements um, with the, the network. When it's completed, the idea is that in the extreme events you will see flooding. You cannot eliminate flooding, eh? let's get that right. You can't um, anywhere. But we can design for a flood event that, um, that's reasonable, that comes every one in 20 years. Um, for the DVRP, we use one in 25 years. The comprehensive re-engineering of the drainage system within Denry South forms part of the Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project for St. Dusha, which aims to increase long-term climate resilience by addressing the multifaceted risk associated with the rain events. The project consists of five components. The first one being the risk reduction and adaptation measures. This component would support structural and non-structural flood and landslide risk reduction interventions and climate adaptation measures to improve Senusha's resilience against current and future climate shocks. Denry South's re-engineered flood mitigation system is a testament to the mandate of the DVRP. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Novella Quiol. If you are in receipt of an abnormally high bill, it is highly possible that you have a leak. That leak may not always be visible. Before you contact Wasco, conduct a do-it-yourself test. 1. Record your meter reading. 2. Do not use water for 30 minutes to 1 hour. 3. Take another meter reading. If the reading changes, you have a leak. Contact a plumber to identify and fix the leak at the earliest. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, WASCO. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Coyol. Ms. Yota Homer. Monsieur, Madame, département qui nous va se pour information à gouvernement cette ci ça c'est GIS, à ce moment télévision nationale, puis la NTN, qui vous êtes une nouvelle à Creole, vous êtes au Primus Hutchinson. Ministre qui nous va se faire pour affaires touristiques à gouvernement cette ci on est avec Dominique Fede, qui aussi c'est représentatif pour Paris en Australie et Canary. Déclaré récemment à Kai Konsitki, le même cabinet a pris une décision qui a un bon bénéfice pour cette lycée. On a fait des annonces qui s'étaient en Jambet, à Village Canary, qui seulement pour Jean Péa pour établir le business. Yo. Selon le représentant de Fede, c'est la première fois dans l'histoire du développement des affaires touristiques, la a une place spéciale des affaires de développement touristique, côté tout cette lycée qui a acheté propriété de la mer pour établir leur business. On a fait des déclarer que c'était un en bas management invest solution et attention c'est pour établir plus que 600 business touristiques seulement pour ce lycée. Représentatif pour un slave canadien a remarqué que à ce qui qui a passé ce lycée a développé une grande quantité d'intérêt à business touristique. Il déclarait que l'IMOA a montré que l'année plus que 4000 lotos pour Haya qui est registré à bas service touristique cette ci par la compagnie qui a offert la transportation au niveau cette ci pour les étrangers web LTPA. De la même façon, l'autorité pour la conservation nationale a autorisé une grande quantité de licences pour les gens qui ont servi de bateau, chaises pour les rivandes qui ont offert les bord de la mer, les rivandes qui ont vendu divers produits touristiques et plusieurs autres personnes qui ont employé en industrie touristique cette ci on a fait des déclarer que bonne remerciable pour le travail au ministère des Affaires touristiques cette ci qui travaille si tellement web pour qui plus cette ci en tant jodia j'ai reçu un grand soulagement en bas loi qui a gouverné opération affaires touristiques cette ci passé pièce temps avant à l'histoire cette ci selon le ministre des de développement comme ça c'est un résultat des visions gouvernement cette ci pour 
et bien, pour placer l'industrie touristique là en la main, c'est le ciel même. Le rapport qui sortit au ministère de la Santé m'a dit le 21 mois d'avril, vous n'avez pas trouvé une pièce 4 9 de maladie corona. Ça, c'est d'ailleurs un batch de 119 durant la période le 19 pour le 20 en mois d'avril 2021. Le ministère de la Santé aussi a reçu une confirmation que 5 individus qui ont souffert de la corona ont joué une guérison et qui ont apporté le numéro 4 qui est actif pour 4 privés présentement. Pour le présent, il y a un cas en ce cas qui est actif, qui est très critique et présentement qui a reçu un traitement à l'hôpital Victoria. Il y a un total de 4419 cas de corona qui ont été reçus pour le présent. Le rapport du ministère de la Santé a montré le 19 avril 2021. En total, de 23 733 personnes ont reçu une dose de la vaccine contre le corona et 57 individus ont reçu une deuxième dose. Tout le monde qui a voulu pour recevoir une dose de la vaccine, le ministère de la Santé a encouragé à enregistrer avant le jour un civil de qui est plus près. Le ministère de la Santé a réfléchi à tout le monde pour toujours suivre ces protocoles pour protection contre le corona et pour réduire la souhabilité de la maladie pour se manger. Ça veut dire servir le masque en public, couvrir la bouche, ne pas être maton, tenir six pieds de distance sociale et pour toujours sanitaire. Si vous sentez comme si vous avez trouvé Floa, allez au tir au docteur plus vite que possible. En parlant de ça, c'est que si j'ai commencé la deuxième phase de la vaccine, ça c'est pour spécialement les travailleurs en secteur commercial, touristique, éducation et transportation. Organisation santé mondiale, ça c'est WHO, j'ai fait possible pour cette si vous suivez tant pour que vous suivez la deuxième dose de la vaccine, sorti six semaines pour huit semaines. Les gens qui trouvent la première dose, là, le 1er mars, pour les 6, supposés trouver la deuxième dose, là, le 26, pour le 30 mars 2021. Les gens qui trouvent le 8 mars, pour le 13 mars 2021, supposés trouver la deuxième dose, là, le 3 e en mois de mai, pour le 8 en mois de mai 2021. Et les gens qui trouvent le 15 en mois de mai, supposés prendre la deuxième dose, là, le 10, pour le 14 en mois de mai 2021. Les individus qui recevraient la première dose de la vaccine le 19 mars et après ça, supposé chen après demain qui au juin du matin y ont reçu la première dose là, et la caïni ont annoncement côté moun caïni pour aller pour trouver deuxième dose. Le gouvernement cette fois-ci a ajouté à ce temps pour continuer confio. Ça c'est à ce recommandation. Command Center, ça, et ça c'est juste le 16 en mois de mai 2021, qu'on s'est laissé à continuer à batailler pour ménager et empêcher la maladie de Corona de se manger à cette ci Le seul changement qui est en protocole là, c'est à présent, les personnes qui ont participé à l'activité de sport, côté yon pas qu'à ni contact et puis yon l'autre. Puis l'autre activité de sport, côté ces joueurs qui ont contact et puis yon l'autre, pas supposé qu'à fait en dehors et bien en dedans, yon se établissement. Pièces de compétition locale et d'activité sociale pas supposées si faites en pièce façon. La nuit aussi provision, il y a un individu et la famille à un caille pour prendre exercice à des places qui s'en sont pour le sport, côté il n'y a pas qu'à supposer des contacts et puis il y en a l'autre, pas ni pour ni plus que 15 personnes ça assister et ça c'est parmi eux qui l'a pour l'activité aussi. Que vous pouvez rester en même l'air, ne vers soi, pour 4 heures. Bon matin. Et ça, c'est côté nous entrons en bout de nouvelle là. Je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Je vous remercie pour vous dire que vous avez la vie. Je vous remercie pour vous donner nouvelle à quoi vous avez présent. Je vous remercie pour vous donner une Merci à Ville Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You could also catch up with us anytime on the Government of St. Lucia Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Humadi Mark.